First of all, I would like to thank Mr. Brilliant for your kind introduction, and also I would like to express my appreciation to Mr. Johnson for his personal engagement in organizing this very important event, one of the major events in my program, although I am paying a very short time visit uh, to New York. I need to go back to my country, but nevertheless, I'm very happy to see all of you this evening. And uh, I also would like to express my appreciation to Chevron, which is blazing the path in Kazakhstan. And I'm delighted to be in the company of the world-class executive leaders today at the Kazakhstan U.S. Investment Roundtable, which is becoming a good tradition, by the way, uh, here in New York, and uh, God bless. Next year, we'll be able once again to get together here. And uh, let me thank our partners at the United States Chamber of Commerce and Business Council members for organizing this event. Today we are witnessing that the pandemic crisis coupled with a geopolitical confrontation among major powers has brought a heightening uncertainty about the state of our world. So the world has changed. The existing economic and political system is collapsing before our eyes. Global market turmoil, supply chain disruptions, and soaring inflation have exacerbated the whole situation. Under these circumstances, we have started the process of a real transformation and building a just and fair Kazakhstan. It's not just election rhetoric, but a serious far-reaching strategy. The essence of comprehensive reforms is based on strengthening the rule of law, transparency, accountability, and ensuring equal opportunities for every citizen. The national referendum on the constitutional amendments held in June became the first major milestone in this direction. With the overwhelming support of the population, the system of checks and balances, as well as increased citizen participation in politics, have been cemented in the Constitution. It was followed by the new initiatives that I announced in my State of the Nation address on the 1st of September. We aim to fundamentally reshape our political order, leaving behind the super presidential system while strengthening the role of parliament. To move forward with these far-reaching and wide-ranging reforms, a new mandate, of course, is needed. That's why I have decided to call a presidential election for this fall. And I also propose to put into the Constitution a new provision which introduces a seven-year presidential term with no right for the same person to be re-elected. I am convinced that it's a real evidence of the radical reform we are undertaking to make Kazakhstan more democratic, more transparent, and more advanced. Meanwhile, I insist on the presidential system of the state based on my own deliberated formula, strong president, influential parliament, and accountable government. In parallel, we are making every effort to renew our economy. We have got the resources, the technology, the skills, and most notably, the commitment. On the last year, the FDI flows to Kazakhstan managed to recover to the pre-pandemic level, owing to around 24 billion in our economy and 38% high relative to 2020. Taking this opportunity, I would like to assure everyone who is here, whom I have a privilege to see here, that all issues will be continuously under my tight control. I'll be personally advocating investors to come into Kazakhstan. We understand that in the conditions of a fierce global competition for capital and investment, the standard for effective investment policy has been raised even higher. Being the largest and one of the fastest growing economies in Central Asia, we pay special attention to improving the investment climate. While doing so, we focus on the fundamentals of a level playing field strong institutions, and responsible business conduct standards. We appreciate the transformative role of the American investment 
that almost in three decades have greatly contributed to the formation of a robust private sector. In fact, the United States has emerged as the second largest investor in our economy, the second one. And the first one, imagine who? The Netherlands, not China yet, injecting almost 60 billion in our economy. The quality and essence of your investments are really high. Our open doors investment policy remains consistent in providing a safe jurisdiction for the United States investors operating in Kazakhstan. Bilateral trade with the United States is another important agenda which has nearly doubled in the last six months along for almost 100% growth in Kazakh exports. I deem to see this could be bolstered by the U.S. trade mission to Kazakhstan, and we would welcome such a trade mission this year. Dear friends, when it comes to our commercial and investment cooperation, the sky is the limit. Let me elaborate on promising areas. First, in view of the current global food security challenges, Kazakhstan presents appealing investment opportunities in agriculture. Kazakhstan is known as the bread basket of Eurasia and uh, is the world's top 10 largest producers of grain crops, annually exporting over 5 million tons of wheat and 1.5 million tons of flour. As a responsible player, we intend to work together with the United States to contribute to international food security by delivering our products to the world markets uninterrupted manner. We encourage investments in deep processing of agricultural products and invite American food manufacturers to explore the investment opportunities. We are ready to provide comprehensive support to such projects. Second, there is a great potential for cooperation in the manufacturing sector. Kazakhstan is one of the global leaders in critical raw mineral and material reserves which can play an important role in bolstering global supply chains and emerging technologies. We possess the world's six largest natural reserves deposits and rank the tens for our total mineral production, excluding oil and gas. Kazakhstan may prove to be the best bet of sourcing these crucial materials, being a home to 60 deposits of precious non ferrous and rare earth metals ready for exploration and development. We invite you to explore this untapped potential as the global demand for critical materials and rare earth metals is expected to quadruple by 2040. The government will provide all the necessary support, including a range of preferences and incentives, such as tax and customs preferences, provision of land plots, and basic infrastructure. In return, we would expect the companies to bring in the best practices, know-how, and new technologies. Next, with the second largest proven oil reserves in Eurasia, Kazakhstan is a reliable supplier of oil and gas resources to mitigate global energy crisis. Our country also accounts for 45% of the global uranium market output. Indeed, we have proven to be a reliable long-term supplier of nuclear fuel components uranium powders and fuel pellets for nuclear power plants around the world on every competitive conditions. In addition, we are one of the main players in the global titanium market. Constituting 11% of the global market, Kazakhstan's titanium is used in shipbuilding, medicine, oil, and chemical industries. Third, Kazakhstan has been steadily moving toward fulfilling its commitments to achieve carbon neutrality by 2016. By 2030, we intend to make a breakthrough in increasing the share of renewables in the energy mix from the current 4% to 15%. The quality of wind, sun, and large land availability can make us a leader in this sector and contribute to global climate efforts. We look forward to forging partnerships in the energy sector that tap not only traditional resources, but also new energy sources, such as green hydrogen and more traditional renewable energy. International experts confirm that Kazakhstan is one of the top 10 countries globally 
with the highest export potential of green hydrogen. Fourth, transportation and logistics is on top of the agenda due to supply chain disruptions caused by the geopolitical tensions. Under these circumstances, Kazakhstan has regained strategic importance connecting East and West. But given the current geopolitical challenges, we have begun to diversify and expand our transit, transportation, and logistics capabilities in Eurasia. We are committed to helping provide new and reliable transit routes to help secure global supply chains. We have worked out optimal transportation routes to Europe and Middle East through the Trans-Caspian Corridor connecting countries of Eurasia. Fifth, in our vision, Kazakhstan is set to become the regional technological hub. We have already started our reforms in supporting digital transformation across the country. These efforts have been recognized globally. The United Nations placed our e-government system in the top 30 list and ranked us 11th in the online service index. We are committed to significantly strengthen the human capital and are set to train 100,000 globally competitive IT specialists by 2025. We are open to, for various types of cooperation with our American partners, including the launch of R&D projects, startups, education, connectivity, integration, among others. I'm delighted to say that the Astana IT Hub has been named Google's exclusive partner for startups in Central Asia, Mongolia, and Azerbaijan. I personally oversee this important sector. We even established a separate ministry which is responsible for this area to help facilitate growth of this industry. The minister is present here and he is ready to work with you. Uh, perhaps if you have any questions, he is ready to answer. Six, Kazakhstan has carried out successful and focused work on the development of stable and sustainable financial sector. Today, our agency for regulation and development of the financial market actively cooperates with the financial regulators of the United States and EU, including sanctions policy. Moreover, one of the truly unique features of our financial infrastructure is the Astana International Financial Center. It's one of the kind in the Central Asian region with an independent court based on the common law. The center provides tax benefits, special visa, and labor regime for its participants. This center is one of a kind and truly provides benefits for the foreign companies investing and working in Kazakhstan. Today, I'm proud to report that more than 1,400 companies from 64 countries around the world work at the Astana International Financial Center. And I expect this number will only continue to grow. It has really become a launch pad for new types of financial instruments, including green financing, Islamic finance, and etc. Last year alone, the sustainable financing market expanded 500 times, exceeding 250 million. We will continue to work on strengthening the financial sector and increasing our country's overall investment attractiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that the strategic economic partnership between Kazakhstan and the United States continues to diversify and expand in all sectors. Today, by virtue of our constructive dialogue, we can reinforce our commitment to facilitating businesses to grow and thrive. National company Kazakh Invest will serve as a single window and provide end-to-end -end support for your initiatives. My team is experienced in assisting investment and transition to Kazakhstan, making it easier for your companies to do business in one of the fastest growing economies in the region. I also want to encourage you to stay in constant touch with Ambassador Yerjan Ashikpayev as a trusted focal point on issues of mutual cooperation. I hope today's meeting will serve as a practical step in advancing trade, economic, and investment cooperation between Kazakhstan and the United States and further cementing the strategic partnership between our two countries. Thank you for your attention.